We have seen that wholeness is the absolute fact of the universe. We have seen that this wholeness is infinite at its origin. That is, it is a cause which is uncaused, a beginning that is without beginning, a source that has no source, at least from the vantage point of our current observation. The next attribute of the infinite whole is that it is intelligent. In other words, it is a living presence. As we have defined earlier, spiritual engineering is a systematic approach to understanding the laws of the universe and deliberately harnessing them to bring your spiritual, emotional, mental, physical and environmental forces into alignment or synergy. This synergy or alignment allows the creative forces of the universe to spontaneously flow through you and manifest as a sublime experience of life that transcends the popular notion of success. The emotional, mental, physical and environmental forces that make up your life are all energy forms that can be measured with scientific instruments that are now at our disposal. Emotion is generated when energy flows through your heart. Consciousness is generated when energy flows through your brain. Action is generated when energy flows through your body. And experience is created when energy flows in your environment and interacts with you. This energy in its pure and unconditioned state is what we know as spirit. It is not a lifeless and mechanical energy, but a living presence that possesses intelligence and unfolds both human life and all of creation through an organized and deliberate pattern or blueprint. The degree of organization and sophistication in the universe leave us without any doubt that the creative spirit is intelligent and deliberate. Proponents of the idea that the universe evolved by chance have no logical basis for their claims. The materialists like Newton and the people of his age simply did not know enough. If chance was ruling the universe, even the laws of physics would be impossible to hold true for a second because the moment you finish writing an equation, another chance event would occur to change the conditions. How is it possible that the planets orbit with precision without running into each other? How is it possible that for millions of years an apple has never mistakenly fallen upward or the sun and moon and stars have never mistakenly switched places? Why is it that you cannot place all the letters of the alphabet into a bucket, shuffle them together, and come up with this essay you are now reading by chance? If the chance theory made any sense, then this would be easier to accomplish than to have this beautiful, sophisticated, and organized universe shaping itself without a guiding intelligence. Let us now review our little imaginary journey so as to bring out this third attribute or law of the universe. If you take an imaginary journey through your body traveling inward, you will find that your body is made up of organs, your organs are made up of tissues, your tissues are made up of cells, your cells are made up of molecules, the molecules are made up of atoms. The atoms are made up of subatomic particles called electrons, protons, and neutrons. These subatomic particles are made up of pockets of light or quanta, and the quanta receive their mass from a field or space that is immaterial in nature and has so far defied scientific characterization. This inner space has been called the zero-point field, the unified field, the divine matrix, 
or the source field. If you take another imaginary journey from your body, traveling outward, you will find that your body lives on this planet called Earth. Planet Earth is part of a solar system. Our solar system is part of the Milky Way galaxy. Our Milky Way galaxy is part of a cluster of galaxies. Our cluster is part of a super cluster. And beyond the super clusters, there is an infinitely expanding field or space which defies scientific characterization. It is this sense of mystery in outer space that has brought about the concept of dark matter and black holes. When you blend the inward journey with the outward journey, what you notice is that life unfolds like a spiral of energy along progressive layers of organization, sophistication and awareness while maintaining the same basic structure at every level. The fundamental structure of the atom is the same structure as the galaxies, which is also mirrored in every life form in between. The universe is therefore a fractal hologram in which every part is an image of the infinitely expanding whole. Here is a very simple test to find out for yourself whether the universe is the self-expression of a living and intentional spirit or it is a giant machine that got here by chance and whose chance activity is generating the phenomena of life as the materialists claim. Here is the exercise. Ask yourself the question, am I alive? Then respond with this other question. Who is asking? Then wait and listen to what happens within you. What you just experienced is called metacognition or being aware of one's own awareness. If you are a self-aware being, which you know you are, and you are the holographic expression of an infinite whole, then that infinite whole that you are the image of must be a self-aware being. If you can prove me wrong on this, then you can throw all the laws of science and spirituality out through the window. Let us re-examine the Big Bang Theory. The singularity from which the Big Bang occurred must have existed within something that preceded that singularity and provided the trigger for the Big Bang. There is no way to escape this assertion since even Newton's law tells us that the fundamental or the, 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 the singularity would have remained in the same position if a force had not acted on it. And the question is, the extreme density and extreme pressure that triggered the Big Bang, where did they come from? Secondly, for all the motion and ev evolution that has occurred since the Big Bang to have taken place, this activity must have been occurring within a medium that is greater than the resulting universe and different from it in substance. We know that things don't move without a mover and things don't move unless they are contained in a medium that is more fluid than them. You find that it is a lot safer to be mad than to find a logical argument that attributes the livingness, the organization, and the expansion in the universe to mere chance. 
It is even a laughing matter because the process of logical reasoning that is implemented in trying to prove this false assertion is proof itself against the theory of chance. How can you be a product of chance and you're capable of logical reasoning? Now that we have empowered you with the first three spiritual laws of the universe, let us now do a recap of the scientific approach through which you may deliberately apply these laws to engineer your sublime life. 1. Be aware that your life is part of a greater whole within which it has a meaning or purpose. 2. Actively pursue your purpose by finding a question to answer or a need to fill. 3. Be clear about what you need to learn and acquire in terms of knowledge, skills, and abilities that will help you fulfill your quest. 4. Identify the most credible sources and methods by which you will go about acquiring this, this learning. 5. Decide how you are going to analyze, synthesize, and apply this learning to fill the need you set out to fill. And 6. Determine what impact this transformative experience will potentially have on your personal life, relationships, workplace, business, and community. You are the individualized expression of a whole, which is infinite and intelligent in nature. Reality is a living spirit, and you are that living spirit incarnate. If this is true, then your purpose on earth is not to struggle for survival, but to know yourself and manifest your glory. Free yourself from fear and self-doubt. Wake up and reveal your splendor. I am Godfrey Aso, and this is Spiritual Engineering.